Hey folks, Mike Naso here with the latest on the tropics. It is the evening of August 3rd, and that means we are getting closer and closer towards the heart of the Atlantic hurricane season of the year 2023. Dr. Philip Klotzbach of Colorado State University has updated the uh, Atlantic hurricane forecast numbers and continues to predict an above normal hurricane season with 18 named storms, including five that have already formed, nine hurricanes and four major hurricanes, and as he puts it, the big question is, how will this record warm Atlantic Ocean interact with an El Nino that is in effect, which normally causes a less active Atlantic hurricane season? Right now, because of how warm the waters are, they're thinking it's going to be a really busy year, regardless of the El Nino. Uh, nine hurricanes, four major hurricanes. We had Hurricane Don, uh, which did not reach major hurricane intensity, but you're still talking what, like eight more hurricanes, four of them major? Major hurricanes being category three, four, or five. That's a heck of a lot of activity, and it's already August, so it's getting close. Now, here are the SST anomalies, being the sea surface temperature anomalies, and this is throughout the last weeks of uh, July to uh, August 1st. Very high sea surface temperature anomalies all throughout the Atlantic Basin. Although you say, Mike, what's this little cool spot right here? That's actually, in part, Hurricane Don uh, upwelling the water. Remember, Don kind of looped around out there, and so that made it anomalously cool. But overall, these are very hot sea surface temperature anomalies. Um, nothing end of the world-ish. It's not going to be the end of the world. Don't buy into the, you know, the doomerism. But it is obvious that we are dealing with very warm Atlantic, and that can translate into hurricane activity. The long-range uh, ensemble models from the European model, this was as of uh, 12Z on August 3rd. It's showing systems coming out of the tropics from Atlantic waves. And all these lines here are different model runs showing different storms, some of them showing hurricanes. I mean, when you look at the red lines there, those are solid, strong hurricanes. One of those lines heads out to sea. One of the lines slams into Cape Hatteras. The other line slams into Hilton Head, South Carolina. So that doesn't mean it's going to happen, but that's through August 18th. So we're getting some indications that things might start getting busy off Africa over the next uh, 10 days or so. Now when we look off Africa right now, we have a very impressive tropical wave. The National Hurricane Center hasn't given this a lemon, a yellow low chance for development. We call it lemon. The moderate chance is orange, so we call that orange. And Cherry, that's the red chance, that's what the hurricane geeks on Twitter tend to say, but it hasn't given it a low chance for development at all. It hasn't mentioned it in any of its outlooks. However, it's an indication that these waves are pretty um, impressive for early August, and the wave train, here's one, here's one, here's one, it's in full swing, and any one of these could develop down the road or at least be a harbinger of things to come. Here's another look at the infrared satellite. And again, very impressive. I mean, that if you told me that was a tropical depression or a storm, I believe you. I've seen hurricanes that look worse than that. But nevertheless, it's expected to continue towards the west, and we will keep an eye on it. There's another good one leaving the uh, coastline of Africa there. Again, they all originate over Africa. They come off the coastline, and then they uh, start to feel the hot ocean water and the spin of the planet and they start to develop. Now here's the GFES ensembles, and again, this goes out to August 17th, so you're talking 300 and some hours. We have a long time to watch it, but look at these storms that develop. Some of them are hurricanes, some go into the southeast coast, some go into the Gulf, some head out to sea, others go into the Caribbean islands. You can't take one and run with it, but it's an idea that we're going to have many systems potentially developing coming from these tropical waves. So that's why we're going to watch it, because that's a sign of things to come. It's like spitting in a hurricane petri dish and seeing what starts to form there. And we see a system coming off Africa from a wave, and look at all these different ideas here. This is the uh, European ensemble. This goes out, I mean, right, if I stop it right there, on August, what is that, August 13th or so? August 10th, boom. On August 13th, anywhere from the Caribbean Sea all the way off the southeast coast. That's a lot of bullseyes. And so we're going we're gonna to watch very carefully. But right now, 
there's nothing there other than some tropical waves. But I wanted to update you just to be ready because when things happen, they can happen quite quickly. Here's another look at the African wave train. There's one, there's one, there's one. And then you look and here's another one and another one. And they look impressive. I mean, that's a, that's a scary look. In fact, if I stop it the other day, look at that. I mean, that is the classic what we call a wave train. There's one here, one here, one here, one here. And all of these are going to be moving over the ocean. And we'll watch them and see what happens. Now, on the Eastern Pacific, now, whenever we have an El Nino year, usually the Eastern Pacific is really busy, and we're on our fourth named storm out there. We had Don in the Atlantic. We have Dora in the Pacific. This is Hurricane Dora as of 11 a.m. Uh, HST. That's uh, Hawaiian time. Uh, Hurricane Dora was sitting there at about 14.4 north, 121.8 west, moving towards the west at 18 very quickly underneath a ridge of high pressure there. And... Uh, Min, winds are 120 miles an hour. It's a very powerful major hurricane, a Category 3. Had been up to a Category 4. It kind of fluctuated today, but it looks like it's strengthening again. It should remain a Category 3 or 4 the next day or so, and then weaken all the way down to a Category 1, but remain a hurricane as it slides south of the state of Hawaii there over the open waters of the eastern Pacific. There's the visible satellite. Cute little thing. Look at that cute little pinwheel out there. She's a cutie, and she's uh, strengthening, it looks like, based on that satellite. Very impressive, good outflow, good symmetry. Not a lot of spiral bands. It's very compact, very circular. It's just all right in there, in the middle of the wide open Pacific. And look at that little pinhole eye. If you were within that eye wall, you'd have winds easy 120 miles an hour. Although, like I said, looking at that satellite, I think it's strengthening. Look at the beginning of this loop, how the western side was kind of open, and now notice the white cold cloud tops surround that little eye. That's a sign that the system has strengthened. So I think Hurricane Dora may be back up to a Category 4, or close to it, but it is way out there. I mean, look at that. Look at that little spinner way down here between Mexico and Asia. Not even going to bother anybody. But Hawaii here... Keep an eye on it. You might have some high swells. Overall, it's going to spin south of Hawaii and remain a hurricane for a few days, but it's definitely a pretty little thing way out there in the Pacific. Another system here south of Mexico will watch that as well. But again, I just wanted to touch on the tropics. We're going to be keeping an eye on these waves. Nothing there yet, but over time, we'll see if anything happens. I'm Mike Naso with the latest on the tropics. Stay tuned. I'll have more next time.